Hey, this is Alan Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. In the last episode, our host Mel Tannen opened up a can of hua and showed us how to create a really cool 3D face using trap code form. In this episode, unlike my contractor who still needs to plug up that hole in my wall, he's going to finish up the project by improving on the look and adding in some more animation. Now, if you don't have trap code form, you can always download a trial version from the Red Giant software website to follow along. This tutorial comes from the MotionWorks training DVD, Making It Look Great 5, which if you watched part one, you know should have been called Making It Look fan frickin tastic but apparently that didn't fit in the logo, so they went with great instead. Anyway, enough talk from the middleman. Let's get to the meat and potatoes, or if you're a vegetarian, then I guess just the potatoes. Hmm. Here we go. Okay, so let's just do some uh, tidying up. Let's name this solid form face. And I think that the only thing left to do is to set up the camera movement. And that's basically it. So let's do that. Let's create a new camera once more. You can choose whatever preset works for you. I've, I've chosen 35mm preset. It just kind of feels right. And we're going to create a new null object that is going to be our camera controller. Make sure to check the 3D switch. And we're going to parent the camera to our null. And OK. Let's just find a nice place in the footage. I think I'd like the face to reveal itself at this point in time, more or less. So let me just go to the position and to the rotation properties. And we're going to set the X rotation and position keyframes in here, because those are the target keyframes. And just before that, we can set the rotation to 90 degrees. That should rotate the, the whole thing. Okay, that's fine. And let's go here. Let me just expand the view here. And let's just move a little bit closer like that. Okay, and I think we need to move upwards as well. Like so. And maybe even to the side. So we do kind of a pan through the particles before we see the face. And I think that's right. And now we can move this keyframe here. So that way we can get the overall look and feel of the animation. Okay, and it rotates and it stays like that. Very cool. I think that we can even start rotating it a little bit sooner. So maybe somewhere in here. That should do just fine. And the last thing to set up is to create the displacement. And we're going to do that by using fractal field. So let's just scroll down. Fractal field. Okay, here it is. And the first thing to do is to set the displacement. And I think that displacement should be pretty high, something around 100 or 150. That looks fine. And we can also set the flow. The flow parameter basically makes the particles look more wavy on a given axis because form doesn't actually emit new particles it just generates particles at the first frame based on the settings that you provide in the uh, first section here uh, base form settings and the amount of particles stays the same but if you want to create the illusion of motion you want to set the flow parameter so i think that we can set the flow parameter across the y-axis. I'm just guessing why should do. And I think we uh, did a little bit too much of the displacement. 100 should work just fine. Okay, uh, but then again, let's just go back to our controller layer. We don't want any displacement in this point in time. So let's just go back to form and set a keyframe here and here the displacement should be zero yes and if we go back just a little bit maybe 
halfway through the rotation here and we're going to set the displacement to 100 and that should work just fine I think it's time for a quick RAM preview to see what we've actually done so far and then make some adjustments as we go okay so let's see how it looks right now We're probably going to need some easy ease keyframes on the position and the rotation, but we'll do that later on as we go. Okay, that's not so bad, but I think we need to make some small adjustments. Uh, to the motion path because as you can see when the interesting thing happens I mean when the camera rotates we get the particles off screen and we don't want that so uh, let's just try some easy ease keyframes and I even think that we can move this part in here select all the keyframes and go animation keyframe assistant easy ease or F9 and let's just check if this helps. Oh yeah, it did help. A little bit, but it did. I also think that we might try playing with the form settings with the strength of the displacement. And I think we can animate that as well. And I wanted to be as it is at this point in time so we kind of start seeing the face but before that I want it to be much higher so let's try maybe something like this and also do some easy ease keyframes in here And we can only hope that it will look okay, because working with that amount of particles is really CPU intense, so basically you have to check what you're doing once in a while by doing a RAM preview. But anyway, I think this should work. Let's just do the final camera move touch up, and that would be zooming into the camera. Let's just choose the right frame. Okay, I think right about here should be a right place to set another position keyframe and then let's just move uh, 10 frames forward and zoom in very tightly. And a little bit more. Okay, and we want to start it with easy ease, but we want to make the end linear so it slowly speeds up and then just goes goes into the warp speed so the camera kind of flies through and okay let's see if this works oh yeah I, I like how he's turning his head and then just the camera goes right next to his nose that's kind of cool okay so let's see how the whole animation looks and we might need to do some changes to the path of the camera since we've increased the strength parameter in the displacement on the form but let's just do a quick RAM preview and see how it looks okay looks pretty interesting a little bit different than the thing that I showed you at the beginning in the rendered file but you know when you're working with particles achieving exactly the same results each time you do the same thing it's not that easy <laughs> so I just hope you'll like this one as well okay let's see how it looks okay looks great I really like it so let's just play a little, a little bit more uh, what we can try to do since we're working 32 bits maybe we could take advantage of it so let's just create an overall adjustment layer on top of everything else and let's apply glow I really like how the standard glow works with form and particular particles 
in 32 bits. It's really, it's really amazing. It really adds uh, a lot of depth to the to the final look. Uh, let's increase the radius to 20, and maybe decrease the intensity just a little bit, like a fraction of a point. 0.7 should do, and maybe we can decrease the threshold. And maybe let's just blur it out a little bit more. Now that's too much. Well, basically this is up to you. You have to find out what works best for you. What kind of look you're after. I think I like this one. Let's just see how it looks without the glow. Okay, the difference is very subtle, but we definitely have more depth and it definitely looks stronger. Okay, so I think that's it for this tutorial and I hope that the rain is over and I hope that the sun just starts to shine for you right now and I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Happy after effecting. Well, there you go. Cool stuff. And if you enjoyed that, and I so know you did, you can check out Making It Look Great 5 where you can learn how to do all the cool stuff you're seeing on the screen here. You can find that and, of course, the other DVDs in the series at motionworks.com.au. In fact, Motionworks is offering a discount on Making It Look Great 5 to go along with this week's tutorial, so check it out. And hey, remember, if you don't have trap code form, you can always download a trial version of the software to follow along. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on trap code form as well. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts. They won't last forever. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. And don't forget to subscribe to the Red Giant TV RSS feed to get notified about the latest tutorials or to subscribe to the Red Giant TV podcast through iTunes or whatever software you use for podcast subscriptions. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time. Video Workshops presents Making It Look Great 5. Design, production, and workflow techniques for Adobe After Effects. We can see a lot of distortion going on. So let's just analyze what's going on here. Well, I obviously know what's going on here because I made it. Hosted by Multanon. Okay, sweet. This looks pretty good on its own, but we're going to make it look even better. Imagine that. And we want it to basically look like the blood is dripping. So to actually do that, we need to go to the transform and play with the offset. If we're going to move it down. This is what we're going to get. And this is actually pretty fun. Maybe let's change the threshold again. Okay, yes, that's it. That's it. See how it gets intensified in the text, but then it just fades out as the text is gone. Very, very nice. The trick here is to actually make this brush paint over our comb and we want to use whatever it paints as an alpha mat. The most commonly used method is to simply take the pen tool and just draw a shape around our subject, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't like additional work in my project, so let's just get rid of this path and I'm going to show you a quicker way to do that. Now that's a pretty nice comp, but that's not all. Would you believe if I told you that we can achieve the same effect without using any pre-comps and just by using standard presets? Work smart, work fast, look great. Okay, this doesn't look so great, but that's because the particles are being blended in the additive mode and we don't want that. We want it to be in normal mode and oh yes. This form grid actually lights up according to rhythm of the sound file. So let me just show you how I did that. 
Make sure your work gets noticed. Making it look great 5. Available now.